Hey guys, Hackersploit here, back again with another video and welcome back to the shell scripting series or course. And in this video, we're going to be looking at conditional statements, more specifically the if statement and the if else statements. So before I get started, I just want to uh, let you guys know that, yes, I understand that we're moving at a very slow pace in terms of what we're covering, but this was requested to me by a beginner who, a beginner who wanted me to cover everything. Now, I'm going to be covering the most important bits and then we'll look at creating our own scripts. And then those videos are going to be focused on creating our own scripts. And from there, you'll be understanding how it's done. But I need to cover the basics and the fundamentals because without them, uh, I know if I make a video like in my Python vi video, people did not understand what I was doing. So I had to explain it. So it's better that I cover all the fundamentals in terms of syntax, like the conditional statements, loops, functions, and variables like I've covered. And then we can move on to creating the really awesome scripts. All right. So I just bear, uh, if you could just bear with me as I go through all the basics and I'll be looking to cover more each video. So, so that we can go through it really, really faster. Okay. So uh, without further ado, let's get started. So we're going to be taking a look at if statements and the if else statements. So what are conditional statements used for? Well, conditional statements are used for decision making when you're creating a script, a program, whatever you want to call it. And they're extremely important because uh, may, many a times you will be forced to uh, to essentially make a decision based on certain uh, certain pieces of data. For example, uh, you could, you need to make a dec decision based on what data was inputted by the user, as we'll take a look right now. So uh, the if statement in shell scripting is extremely easy to understand. And again, as I mentioned, intuitive. But what I want you to do is if you're already experienced as a programmer or you've already uh, done scripting with Python, for example, do not carry any of the syntax rules to, to, to shell scripting because it, it, it is slightly different in, in regards to the syntax and how everything is structured. All right. So, uh, I currently have nano opened here. And the reason being is many of you told me that I should use, um, the terminal editors like Vim or nano. And I prefer using nano, especially right now, because again, most of you will say, how do I use Vim? Because Vim is slightly different, but again, that's also something I hope to cover. But getting that out of the way, uh, so I'm using uh, nano and you can see I created a file here, a shell file called conditional.shell and I've already given it uh, the uh, the executable permissions. So uh, I have uh, already initialized uh, or uh, set the, diff the default interpreter here and we're ready to go. So the syntax is quite simple. All right, so you have your if statement and then you want to give it a space. It's usually preferred to give it a space and then you use your square brackets and in here is where you would put in your condition and you close that and you have then your semi, uh, your semicolon. After that, you go down here and type in then, and then you hit enter and you indent a little bit. Now, of course, this really is not important as it is uh, in Python, but it, it is, it is good for the aesthetic purpose or for readability that you indent so that uh, people understand what you're doing. All right. So then after the statement, after the, after then you then put in your condition here, which can be anything. We'll look at that. And then to end the if statement, we, we type in if, but backwards. So F I pretty weird, but uh, again, very, very intuitive and something that you'll get a hold of really, really quickly. So again, just to recap. So you have your if statement, you put in your condition right here. Always remember uh, the semicolon. You then say then, and then you put the condition in here. And you then close the uh, the if statement with fi, and that's simply uh, that's basically how you do it. Okay, so let's create a simple uh, let's create a simple script here that will essentially just check if data is, if data is uh, data from a variable is uh, is valid, or we'll just perform a simple test. All right, so uh, let's declare a simple variable here, and I'm going to give this uh, the variable name. I'm going to give it a value of Alexis, which is my name. By the way, for those of you asking from, from the previous video whether I am 45 years old, uh, the answer to that is no. Uh, it was just a joke. I thought many people would get it. But anyway, uh, name is Alexis. And then I'm going to say if, and again, following the same syntax rules, I'm going to say if uh, my variable is now, this is the, the, the thing about initializing variables inside the if statement or inside the condition state, uh, inside the condition brackets right here is you need to use a space. I would recommend that you use a space to avoid any errors and you should declare all variables and any data inside your quotation marks. Okay. So how do we, uh, declare a variable? So we say name 
and we have specified the variable. Now again, remember to use a space between the equals. That is very important as it makes sure you're not initializing or you're not appending the value or uh, the value of the variable. Let me explain what I mean. If I was to say name is equal to and I give it another value, if, essentially you know what I'm doing. I'm checking for the value. But let's say I was going to say check for uh, Alexis or I say check for John, right? This would mean in terms of shell scripting, this would mean that I'm changing the variable, uh, the, the value of the variable name to John. So remember, always use a space, which means you're, you're testing the value. All right. And in here, I want to say check if the name value is Alexis. OK. And then after that, uh, remember your semicolon. And then we say then and hit enter. And I use the indent there. Now in here is where I put my condition. So I'm saying if uh, if the, the variable name is equal to Alexis, what do you want to do? So I say, I want you to print out the following. So I'll say echo and I'll say, welcome Alexis. All right. Some simple message like that. And since I'm done there, I just have type in FI and I hit enter. And now uh, with nano, you can hit the control plus O and hit enter. And don't worry, you can use any editor that you want. If you want to use a GUI based editor, like visual studio code, all the rest of them go ahead by all means. I'm going to hit control X to exit and I'm going to launch uh, the uh, let me just clear that up. So I'm going to launch the uh, the conditional dot uh, sh or the, the shell file here and I'm going to hit enter. So it's going to say welcome Alexis. Pretty, pretty simple. Now, of course, as I mentioned, you can manipulate this to, to fit your needs. And I'm going to be covering that when we look at uh, using the else statement, which is right now. OK, so let's open up nano again here. And now we are going to be using the if else statement, which is not entirely different from the, uh, the if statement in terms of syntax. OK, so the uh, the if else statement is used to test a condition, whether it's true and or false, and then give another value if uh, the test fails or succeeds, depending on how you want to customize it. OK, but for this one, let's make the script or the example a little bit different. All right. So before you do that, let me just explain the syntax here. All right, so the syntax is pretty pretty similar. So you have your if and you have the condition in here and use your semicolon. You then say then and then you have your condition again, right? Or whatever you want to print out. And then after this, we type in else. And then uh, after else, you type in your condition again, what you want in case the test, the earlier test fails or passes, depending on what you want. And then we end it with fi, all right? Pretty, pretty simple. But as I said, I'm going to explain this with a much better example that will hope, hopefully encapsulate everything we've learned so far. So variables, uh, accepting user input, uh, maybe comments, maybe not. But anyway, uh, I'm going to create a script here that will essentially ask me, ask the user for their name or their username. And then we will test that username for a preset of, uh, a preset conditions. Okay. So let's start off and say, uh, echo. So let's prompt the user. We can say echo. Uh, please enter your username. All right. And we just hit enter. All right. So now we need to read the value. So we say read and we're going to assign the value into a, a variable called name. I know I'm using name a lot, but just bear with me. All right. So that's going to, that's going to read and store it in the variable name. All right. So now we need to use the conditional statement. So we say if, and again, remember the rules. Um, and we say if name, um, is going to be equals to and you can you can test it or change it to whatever you want. So in this case, I'll say, uh, let's say Elliot. All right, let's change it up a little bit. So I'm going to say if name equals Elliot, sorry, and we use the semicolon, I'm going to say then um, I want you to uh, echo, I want you to echo out uh, welcome uh, back. Oops, sorry, Elliot, and we close it like so. And then after this, we say else. So in case the name is not Elliot, what do we want to print out in uh, in in return? So we say echo, uh, and let's say if the user is not Elliot, uh, then you you do not have an account on the on the system. So we'll say um, we're going to say invalid user name. Uh, oops, is that correct? No. Uh, please register an account. All right. And uh, that's essentially what's going to be printed out in case the username is not Elliot. And after this, we type in FI and that will essentially close the if statement and voila. So now I'm going to hit control plus O to save it, control X, and we're going to launch this again. All right. So now it's going to prompt me to enter my username. 
So I'm, uh, I, we can test it also. We can say John, all right, for example, and we hit enter and you can see invalid username, please register an account. Let's run that again. Uh, please enter username. We can try Alexis, invalid username, so we know it's working. And finally, we can test it with the, uh, the value that we want, uh, which is Elliot. And we hit enter and there you are. Welcome back, Elliot. Now, the brilliant thing about conditional statements is that uh, more specifically for shell scripting is that they can be used to perform tests. Now you might be a little bit curious. What do you mean by tests? Well, uh, the script you're going to be looking at next in terms of, uh, in terms of uh, conditional statements and covering what we've all that, all that we've looked at is a script that will check for, uh, for different files and directories. Let me explain. So if you've ever performed post, uh, you know, privilege escalation or post exploitation, uh, and you want to enumerate, uh, you know, details about the, the system that you've just exploited. We have the Lin, uh, the Linux uh, enumerator uh, dot a shell file, as you already know. And essentially what that does, that script is all, all it's really doing is it's performing tests for different files and directories. And if you open it up and inspect it for yourself, as we'll do, you'll, you'll see that all it's doing is just performing conditional, uh, it's just performing different conditions and making decisions based on what results are gathered. So for example, it can check for different files that exist on the system. So first of all, it checks for the users. If it finds the users, it displays them out. It displays uh, the contents of the user file. It then checks for the password file, which essentially contains the uh, the hashed passwords, which you I guess you have to hash, uh, unhash, sorry. And it displays them out. If it doesn't file, if it doesn't find a file or directory in which it's testing for, it does not display it back. So we are going to be looking at, at performing tests in the next video, which is really, really exciting. So uh, that's going to be it for this video, guys. If you found value in this video, please leave a like down below. If you have any questions or suggestions, let me know in the comment section on my social networks or on my website. And I'll be seeing you in the next video. Peace.